Hey kids, it's Mr. Fla here, hope you're well. Now, I've been lucky enough to be riding for the last month this, the X Diavel from Ducati, a sort of a juxtaposition of a bike, a sportly cruiser, if that makes sense. If you're interested in this bike, you're gonna wanna stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so as I say, I've had this bike for the last month or so and I've ridden the absolute pants off it to learn as much as I possibly can about the motorcycle. I've made copious notes as I've gone along. Uh, I've learnt a load of lessons about the bike, both good things and bad, sorts of things that you may not pick up if you just did a one-hour test ride on the bike. So if you're interested in the XD Avel, you're going to want to stick around and stay tuned to this video. Right, let me tell you about the uh, positive points I've found. Okay, so as you can guess, on a big old beast like this, there are plenty of positive points. And these are the things, in no particular order, that I thought, as I've been riding the bike, are the things that I really like about this machine. First thing I've uh, written down here is that it's non-intimidating. Given the looks of the bike, it is a brute of a bike, big old engine on it. Um, I mean, it's an absolute massive beast, and the thing goes like stink. You would imagine that the bike would be intimidating to ride, but it's absolutely not the case. Once you're on it, the weight kind of falls away, as all big bikes do. Because of this low seat, you can get your feet nicely on the deck. You feel very confident when you're riding it. Uh, it is a completely non-intimidating bike to ride, despite its look. So that's the first thing I love about it. Uh, next up, and this uh, may seem a silly point, but it's just something that I've enjoyed looking at as I've been riding the bike, the backlit switchgear on here. Uh, they glow red during the day and night, and they just look epic. I really like that. I don't know why more bike manufacturers don't do backlit switchgear. Some do. KTM have been doing it for ages. Triumph are starting to do it now. But there are some notable exceptions, like uh, BMW, for example, that don't. But I'm really glad to see that Ducati are now doing that uh, on the X Diablo. It looks absolutely epic, so I love that. Uh, next thing about it, really good brakes on here. It is a big heavy bike, it needs to stop well, and these have got the Brembos on here, and the thing has got great stopping power. The brakes on this, I absolutely love. Gearbox, smooth as you like. I'm not so keen on the feet forward riding position, of which more later, I'm sure, but uh, the brakes absolutely, uh, sorry, the gearbox is as smooth as you like. I thought that uh, because the gear lever is in that weird position with your feet forward, it would be difficult to change gear, but actually, because it's got a nice smooth gearbox, it's not difficult at all to ride in any way, but uh, changing gear is a nice experience. The only thing that I have found with it is sometimes it's quite difficult to find neutral when you come to a stop. It's better if the bike is rolling to get into neutral rather than wait till you've actually stopped. But other than that, really smooth gearbox. I love that about the bike. Next up, and this is perhaps my favourite thing, I mean, the looks of the bike, just look at this thing. It is an absolute beast, particularly from the rear. I think the bike looks amazing. So, uh, I mean, that goes without saying, I guess, but I've said it now, uh, the looks on this bike are absolutely amazing. A big positive point. The other great thing, and this is probably is the most important thing, is how the bike makes you feel. It's just cool when you're on this machine. The riding position, it might not be practical, it might not be that comfortable, but goodness me, you don't have to feel cool when you're riding this. So this bike just makes you feel good, which is a, which is a massive plus point for a bike, if you ask me. Next up, uh, loads of grunt. I mentioned the big engine earlier, but this thing absolutely flies. Uh, it's got riding mode, so you can adjust it for if you're in the rain and so on, but in its top uh, sporty mode, my goodness me, it's a rip your arms off type of bike. Again, probably enhanced because of your feet forward riding position, but the thing absolutely flies. If you're into sports bikes and you want to move to cruisers, this is the one to have. Okay, next up, exclusive I've written here, is not common on the roads. I don't know if I've ever seen an X-Diavel on the roads. Now that probably reflects that they're expensive bikes and therefore probably not massive sellers, but this isn't a bike you're going to see around every corner. When you go down your local high street and you park this up outside the cafe, you're not going to be parking next to a load of other X-Diavels. So uh, it is very much an exclusive bike and I like that about it. Uh, next up, the TFT on here is very nice actually, super clear. Some TFTs look a little bit noddy, I think. I'll na I won't name them, uh, but th on this bike it's very, very clear. I do like the TFT on this. Uh, and then the last thing that I've noticed is it's got this, I mean, it's got this amazing rear wheel and single-sided swing arm, which I like, but allied to that, belt drive, which means no chain maintenance. That's a massive plus. No messing about with oiling and lubricating. I can't tell the difference between riding a bike with a chain and riding one with a belt, but what I do know is this one doesn't take as much looking after, and that's got to be a plus point. Okay, so that's all well and good. No bike is perfect though. What about the negatives? And again, I've made a comprehensive list here of the negatives that I've found about this bike. This may not be important to you, but they're just little niggles that I've discovered. Again, in no particular order. First thing, the exhaust. I think it looks pretty good actually. I'm not too sure about the big box underneath it, but that's a necessary for Euro 5 compliance, I assume. I think it looks okay, but the disappointing thing about it is it doesn't sound very good. Just as stock, you can't really hear much coming out of the exhaust. Um, it's, um, as it rides by, there is some popping and banging going on, which sounds quite good to the occasional person standing next to the road. <laughs> but 
but actually when you're riding it, you don't get the sense that you're making a great noise. That might be a silly thing, but it's something that's important to me. That is a little bit of a disappointing sounding exhaust. Uh, next up, although I mentioned that the, uh, the low riding position is fantastic and that you can get your feet down, I mean, it's super low, as you can see. Voila, feet flat on the deck. This riding position with your feet up like that, after about an hour, it really does start to get your back. All your weight is down here on your coccyx and on your backside, as opposed to a little bit on your legs if the pegs were in this position. So for me, you can get the XD Avil with mid-set pegs. I would definitely go for that. The feet forward riding position, actually, although that might make you feel cool, it doesn't make you feel good after about an hour. You get a bit of backache, or certainly I do in my aging bones. So that's a bad point. Um, Another thing I've noted here is I was more aware of vibrations on this bike than I normally am. It's not a terribly vibey bike, but at all revs really and at all speeds, there is some thumping and banging going on. It is a big old V-twin. Ducatis do have character. You could put it down to character, but I think after a while the vibes would start to annoy me a bit. Uh, next up, uh, oh, I've written here feet forward riding position. We've already talked about that. I really don't like that. Definitely go for the mid-set pegs. Oh yeah, next bit here. Um, <laughs> I get what you call ex diavel back when you ride this in the wet. Although it's got this sort of mudguard thing, as you'd expect, this big old fat tyre, and as you can see, it's much wider the tyre than the mudguard, throws up an awful lot of water. When you're riding along, I get covered in water on my back. So again, probably not a bike that's gonna be ridden that much in the rain. But if you are only gonna have one bike and this is gonna be it and you ride in all weathers, expect to get your back wet. That, uh, this rear tyre does throw a lot of crud on the back. Uh, again, not, not a surprise, I guess, but uh, something that sort of surprised me when I first went out and got home and had a soaking wet back. The other thing is, now when I went through the positives, I said that the handling on the bike was very good, and it is indeed good for a bike with such a big rear tyre and such a raked out front end. But what I did find is it's, it's just not as agile as, uh, as other bikes that I ride. So once or twice I went into a corner uh, and I did go wide and it took a bit of sort of fighting around and I had one of those sort of bum clenching moments. That happened a few times, so actually, you may have seen other reviews where everybody says the handling is amazing. It is good, don't get me wrong, but it's not like a, you know, a normal naked bike or a sports bike, anything like that, nowhere near. You will go wide on corners, you've got to treat it with respect. Um, and then the last thing that I've noted here, and again, I suspect this is to do possibly with the raked out front end of the big tail, uh, big tire, is it tends to tram line on rough roads or roads where there are some undulations. You can feel yourself getting caught in those. So on motorways and things where trucks have been going along, I found myself just caught in the tram lines, more so than I would, would notice on another bike. And again, I suspect, as I say, down to that thick rear tyre. All right, so that's it, uh, that's it for the negatives. Um, seems like quite a long list, but I have been, as I say, riding the bike quite a lot in the last month, and uh, I thought it was important to tell you the things that maybe other reviewers don't tell you. Okay, so there we have it. That's the lessons I've learned since I've been riding the X Diavel over the last month. What are my final thoughts about the bike? Well, it surprised me actually, but not necessarily in a good way. When I learned that I was going to be borrowing this bike, I was really excited because the bike looks amazing and I thought I was going to really love the bike. But as time has gone on and I've learned a little bit about the impracticalities of the bike, it's, um, it's sort of, I've come to realise it's really a sort of a one-trick pony. It's a posed bike for a sunny Sunday afternoon. Fantastic for that. Uh, but anything else, touring, it's going to hurt your back. You can't really get a pillion on that back seat. Uh, it's heavy to move around here on the driveway. I just think the practicalities of this bike, for me at least, means this bike isn't for me. So I'm really glad I've got to know the bike. Thank you to Gigatti for lending it uh, to me. But I'm sorry for me, the X Diablo looks stunning, but that's about all it does. So for me, it's a thumbs down. Alrighty, that's it for this time. I hope you found that of uh, some interest, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. Fly. Cheerio.